I don't want to play Shadow, man. Why not? Because I'm not doing 20% more damage than everybody else. So what? You only play it when it's flavor of the month. But that's my favorite flavor. You know what you need, man? Talents, essences, gear, rotation, and a bunch of awesome tips since Shadow is not as bad as people think. It has amazing clay potential. It's not cooldown reliant. It's very corrupt. Before we start, a quick reminder that the guide will focus on the fundamentals. Even if we aim to provide you with a basic startup guide, we will still cover everything you need to know to start your shadow journey. With that out of the way, let's look at the first talent rope. Shadow or Void will be your best option here. It replaces Mind Blast and offers an extra charge with a cooldown reduced by haste. This does a few things on top of increasing the raw amount of damage. It also increases the sanity gain and most importantly offers the possibility of sitting on a charge of the cast without actually losing value by wasting its cooldown as long as you cast it before it caps on charges. This indirectly helps you with mobility since you can move easier in between casts and essentially prolongs the windows in between each Mind Blast cast, and in this case, Shadow Void, 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 Words. I know the skill, guys, I've read the tooltip. Second row, take Body and Soul as the default. This gives your shielded targets a small burst of speed. It's great to make the fools faster, but what about you? Well, you also get the speed, and really, this is the main reason you take this talent. Priest has no mobility, and by no, I mean... You know when you go to a bar and you see like a smoking hot chick in a red dress sipping on a martini and you approach her, she notices you and before you can say anything, she says no. Yeah, it's like that. So having any form of on-demand mobility will be way worth it. An alternative is intangibility, making your dispersion also able to heal you for 50% of your HP. This is good in specific situations where you know you cannot avoid a mechanic and might even have to soak it. Having this baby will relieve pressure from your healers in tight situations, especially good in raids where multiple people need spot healing. Next up, take Twist of Fate. For single target fights, this provides you with a damage increase when damaging an enemy low on health. This is particularly good when you want to pump as much damage into a boss that has a dangerous phase during the end of the encounter. Certain groups even take advantage of this by bloodlusting during this phase. When fighting a few extra adds or a cleave fight in general, Misery will be a good alternative. This bakes your Shadow Ward Pain into your Vampiric Touch cast, reducing the amount of globals you need to spend to dot everything up while also maximizing the damage. With that logic in mind, Dark Void will be good for massive add fights like Hive Mind or Mythic Dungeons. With one GCD, you apply pain on all targets in a small group. In very high AoE scenarios, you won't be double dotting everything anymore, and solving this issue with just one spell can free you up to keep your insanity rolling and cast more important spells. The fourth row brings some CC into the discussion. Ideally, you should go with Psychic Horror. This gives you a single target stun that can complement your kit. It has multiple uses, same as any other stuns in the game, so nothing specific to add. Last word reduces the cooldown of silence, your only interrupt by 15 seconds. This is mostly used in dungeons where kicks are very important. There are very few situations where reducing your kick cooldown by 15 seconds will be important enough and in those situations those 15 seconds will really matter, but there are very few. This comes down to you, your group composition and the knowledge of the fight. Next year take Auspicious Spirits as the default option on the row. Yes, it has been nerfed. Yes, it's still the best. Most of this and the stigma Shadow has received has to do with people not realizing how well Shadow actually scales in the endgame. Without the nerfs, Shadow would have been so crazy that you would have seen raids filled with just Shadow Priests. Sixth tier brings lingering insanity. After your void form ends, the haste stacks you accumulated decay every 3 seconds instead of all at once. What this does is essentially smoothens out your, quote, downtime. It speeds up your insanity generation for your next void form, giving you faster and faster void forms with more and more stacks each time. Shadow is the kind of spec that scales better and better the longer the fight goes on, 
as long as you don't fuck up the rotation. And lastly, Legacy of the Void will be the last pick when it comes to talent. This reduces the cast time and insanity requirement of activating Void Form while also increasing the damage it gives by 5%. This plays smoothly into the previous talent and makes Void Form more consistent, easy to cast and have a higher uptime. Stats are a very sensitive subject when it comes to Shadow Priests. Although the priority of the most important ones are set in stone, you can still sim yourself if you enjoy this aspect of the game. That aside, you want crit and haste more than anything. Crit is usually going to be a bit better than haste, but both will be way better than versatility and mastery, which will be way at the bottom. Critical Strike is the best stat because of the shadowy apparition passive you have baseline, double dipped with auspicious spirits. While haste decreases cast time and cooldown of the most important sanity generating abilities, meaning you will be able to keep up void form for way longer. This scales into a snowball type of DPS output where the eye level you equip provides you with an exponential damage increase instead of a linear one. I don't know what these maths definition mean, but I think I read them somewhere and if you say the words right and don't fuck them up, you can also make a YouTube channel of your own. <laughs> no really, that's all it takes. When choosing consumables, you should ideally go with what sims higher between crit and haste. Ideally, you want to reach a safe amount of haste, something like 30%, which can differ from player to player. Once you have that amount, try to focus on whatever is lower between crit and haste. The best way to know is to sim, but if you cannot be bothered, then that little rule should help. I'm also mentioning this because certain corruptions can skew the balance heavily, so there is no one right answer for everything. As such, go with a Court of Haste and Quicksand Spindle for your rings and sockets. These will probably be the easiest interchangeable options here, which you can swap for their crit counterparts. The weapon will be the Machinus Brilliant Enchant. This procs intellect and the highest secondary stat you have. Overall, this will be your best choice. Your flask should be the Greater Flask of Endless Fathoms with the Unbridled Fury Potion as the best one to choose from. If feasts are available, you can munch on that or simply use the baked potato for max haste power. Again, this is just a starting point and or reference point, but to get that extra few percentages of damage out of your shadow, you will need to sim and optimize, which at the end of the day comes down to how you like to play the game. As far as Azurai goes, rejoice since you really need one build for both dungeons and raids. Sure, there's always room to optimize that one extra bit, but hey, there's always extra room for improvement, which is what my med school teachers used to say, but haha, <laughs> who's laughing now, huh? <laughs> Take one Whispers of the Dam, just one. Remember when I said crit helps your shadowy apparitions? Well, critting with Mind Blast, or in your case, Shadow Word Void, will generate 20 extra insanity, which is a whole Void Bolt worth of insanity on top of what it normally does. The damage is okay, but since that's the only thing that scales here, you don't really want to stack this. What you want to stack is Chorus of Insanity three times. This will give you stacks of crit per each stack of insanity once your void form ends. These also decay, but playing with more haste and the level 6 talent, you'll be able to retain more and more stacks the longer the fight goes on. The rest of the slots can be filled with generic stat traits like Swirling Sands that gives crit or Heart of Darkness once you have enough corruption to proc it. Spiteful Apparitions is a good alternative in Mythic Plus scenarios, but usually these are the traits you want to aim for as much as possible. For the essences, you can build towards single target or AoE, and each build can be used in both raids and dungeons, depending on what you are looking to achieve. For single target, you can go with the Memory of Lucid Dreams Major or the Condensed Life Force Major if you raided last year or don't mind hopping in now to get it. Life Force at rank 3 only is a good choice for pure single target while Memory is a good choice everywhere else. As miners, start with Blood of the Enemy, working on both Grid and Haste, with Essence of the Focusing Arrows being a good haste buff when you are in pure single target. Breath of the Dying is the up-and-coming player on the block with a lot of damage pumped as a miner even if you don't have it at rank 3. For AoE scenarios, Focusing Iris will be your general option here for AoE Burst as a major. Memory of Lucid Dreams has universal usage regardless of how many targets you fight. 
The main issue with Shadow in Dungeons is that you want to be ideally in combat 100% of the time to either not waste any buff stacks or mitigate their decay as much as possible. This is usually something you can achieve with a pre-made group and in very high keys in contrast with your eye level, so that shit doesn't die too fast. As miners, you can opt for the same ones, Blood of the Enemy, Breath of the Dying and, depending on the major you picked, Memory of Lucid Dreams or Focusing Iris. There are more options you can play with and test or even sim and these ones are recommended assuming you have them at rank 3, with Breath of the Dying being the only exception. When it comes to any sort of gear, you should check the WarcraftPriest.com website where you will find links and graphs like this one right here. Especially as the meta is forming and Blizzard is running out nerfs and buffs left and right. For Trinkets, Psyche Shredder and Vita Charge Tanner Shard seem to be the best at the moment. Shredder is a shadow damage proc trinket that works really well considering how much haste you will be rocking. And speaking of haste, the Tanner Shard is one of the best new haste trinkets added this patch and currently available. If you need alternatives, one really easy to get is the Humming Black Dragon Scale from Rathian and really any high eye level haste or crit trinkets you can loot from your mythic key runs. When it comes to weapons, the corrupted types, Shadow has two very underwhelming options in the raid. Vorv's Yokal and Eyestock of Ilginoth are okay to have if you don't have any other corruptions available, but most likely not something you want to save your bonus rolls for. If you are running the Heart of Darkness trade and have no other corruptions available, then these will be good triggers for it. Otherwise, you want to aim for specific corruptions, and by aim I mean hope to the dear gods, the old kind, that they will corrupt an item you can equip with the effect that you want. What? This is too RNG-ish? Ah, you're crazy, this is fine. Infinite Stars is still the best single target damage factory in the game, and Gushing Wounds having the most value per corruption point currently available. Twilight Devastation will be the AoE counterpart, although seems to be a bit wonky for casters since it procs at your location and not at the target you are hitting. What you really want to keep an eye out for is the severe corruption that increases the amount of crit you gain from other sources. Discounts, gear, buffs, traits, essences and yeah, pretty fucking good, right? Not to mention that it provides crazy value considering how cheap it is to equip only outshine by gushing wounds and even that is debatable. The opener is simple since most of your rotation is pretty baseline and requires minimal setup. Make sure you are in shadow form if you are a forgetful dumbass, not a major issue if your name isn't flame. Pre-pot before the pool as always and pre-cast Shadow Ward Void. Apply Shadow Ward Pain and Vampiric Touch. Cast your second Shadow Ward Void. Fill in with Mind Flays until you can pop Void Eruption. Cast Void Bolt and continue to the normal priority list. Number one to cast at all times is Void Form, Void Bolt being a close second. Shadow Fiend next. Maintain Pain and Vampiric Touch. Shadow Ward Void. Fill in with Mind Flays and that's about it. A few notes here, Shadow Fiend should be cast ideally at your highest amount of haste possible. It's difficult to tell with BFA having 50 buff procs that you can track, but the more you aim at popping the Fiend then, the better your insanity generation will get since Fiend gets your haste. So yeah, it's pretty good. When in Void form, you will often find yourself mid Mind Flays as your Void Bolt got off cooldown. It's ideal for you to interrupt your Mind Flay by casting Void Bolt. Considering you get your Azerite trade and talents that we recommended, Void Bolt will be your number one ability once you are in Void form. Shadow Fiend is still close after with Void Eruption taking a spot next. Maintain Pain and Vampiric Touch on the targets. Use Dark Void when the adds are clumped for easy pain spread. Shadow Ward Void next on the list with Mind Seer replacing Mind Flays as a filler on three or more targets. You should avoid Void Bolts if you can hit 16 or more targets. That's a bit unlikely unless you are playing at a high level with a tank and a group that know what they are doing. Also, Shadow War Void is ignored when you are fighting 5 or more targets. This is simple math in terms of how to optimize damage output and insanity generation. There are other talents and even traits that can alter the rotation a bit, at least in terms of priority. I would recommend you check the Warcraft Priest Discord channel 
where you can find details about this, specifically the Wowhead guide written by DJ Riff, who helped clarify certain things we were iffy about. We covered the basics, but there is a lot more to learn about Shadow, and for any advanced tips, the Warcraft Priest community has a lot of info, and you can find the links down below. A special thank you to our top Patreon, San, who mains the Shadow for longer than I've been a non-virgin, and if you think I'm lying, I have no data to support my claim. But San does know his Shadow stuff, and he is an active member of our community. If you are interested in having any Shadow questions answered, check San in our Discord or add his Battle.net tag San hashtag 22540. <laughs> no really, he offered this to us and I warned him he would get dick pics and marriage proposals from different princes from warmer climates. Thank you very much to our patrons for supporting our content. Guys, you make all of this possible and you motivate us to never, never give up at improving our quality at everything and in everything that we do thank you very much everybody and if you are interested in supporting us a little bit more check the links down below you will find our patreon link we even have a merch link with some marcellian cool graphical designs that you can get for yourself if you like it thank you for watching the video hope it helped and we'll see you next time